Hey everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. In this problem, we're going to talk about one of the important theorems from calculus called the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem. There's a couple mean value theorems in calculus. This is the mean value theorem. This is the, the first one, the most important one maybe. Um, it's the first one you learn. We can abbreviate it with three letters, MBT. All right, so what does the mean value theorem say? Um, so here are the conditions. So suppose you have a function, f, is, and there's two conditions. So the first condition is that the function is continuous on the closed interval. So f is continuous on the closed interval, a, b. So, so far it looks just like Rawls here. Two, f is differentiable on the open interval, a, b. So far, identical to Rawls. The third condition, uh, well, that's it. There is no more. If it was Rawls, you would have that third condition where the um, endpoints are the same, right? The y values at the endpoints are equal. But it's not, it's the mean value theorem. So the first two conditions are very similar. So if these two conditions hold, then there is a number, there is a number c in the open interval, so just like Rawls, such that the value of the derivative at c is equal to the slope of the secant line connecting two points, which I'll show you what they are in a minute. So it's f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we get this perhaps peculiar looking equations, which I'll explain in a minute graphically. So the mean value theorem, the first two um, conditions are pretty much identical to Rawls theorem, uh, but the conclusion is different, right? We're missing the third theorem from Rawls. You'll notice, you'll notice if we had that third, if we had that third condition from Rawls, remember Rawls says that f of a is equal to f of b. If that was the case, then you would get, these are the same, so you just get zero. So you would end up getting zero here, which is exactly the statement of Rawls theorem. So Rawls theorem is a special case of the mean value theorem. However, in order to prove the mean value theorem, you have to use Rawls, kind of a random factoid. Okay, so let's look at a picture so we can explain uh, what's going on here with the mean value theorem. I'm gonna leave this up so we can see what exactly it means. So here's a picture. So here's A and here's B, okay? And then maybe here's F of A. And then f of b, let's just put it um, here. Let's put f of b here. This is f of b. All right, so what does uh, the mean value theorem say? Well, the function has to be continuous and differentiable. So to keep it simple, I'll just do this. Okay. So it's saying there is a number somewhere between a and b such that the derivative is equal to this. Well, what is this? Well, if you draw a line here, you get the secant line. Remember, that's the, it's called the secant line. And you can find the slope of this line by drawing a triangle, right? This distance here is b minus a, okay? This, this big distance here is f of b. This little distance here is f of a. So this little distance here is f of a. This big distance here is f of b. So this distance here, that's big minus little, f of b minus f of a, f of b minus f of a. So that's f of b minus f of a. So that's the rise and that's the run. So the slope of this line, the slope of this line is equal to this. So what it's saying is that there is a number c in the open interval where the slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line, or the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. So again, Given A and given B, and then say this is F of B and this is F of A, and draw it one more time. Given any two points like this, um, if, you, if you connect the secant line, what this says is that there is a point C, a number C between A and B, such that the tangent line at that number is parallel to the secant line, right? In other words, the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. Another way to think about it, the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change. 
The derivative is the instantaneous rate of change. So somewhere in the open interval, the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. So given a continuous function that's differentiable on an interval a, b, continuous in the closed, differentiable in the open interval, there is a number somewhere in the interval where the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. If you're thinking of velocity, the average velocity is equal to the instantaneous velocity at some point in that, in that interval. Okay, let's go ahead and do an actual problem where we find C. Um, I sh we sh I'll just make one up and we'll do it. Let's, let's do it. So just making it up, let's, let's be bold. F of x is x squared. Uh, let's make up a nice interval. How about 0, 1? And let's find C. We should be able to find C, right? Because this is a polynomial, so it's continuous and differentiable everywhere. In particular, it's continuous on this closed interval, and it's differentiable on this open interval. Therefore, it satisfies all the criteria of the mean value theorem. So to, to find C, all we have to do is use this equation, right? So we take the derivative. The derivative is 2x. So 2x, that's what's going to go here. Here there's a C. I'm using an x instead, right? The derivative of x squared is 2x. And we set it equal to f of b minus f of a. So this is your a, this is your b. So it'll be f of 1 minus f of 0 over b minus a, so 1 minus 0. Right? You can think of this as 2c, same thing. You can just call it x, it doesn't really matter. This so is 2x equals, uh, let's see, f of 1 is 1, right? 1 squared is 1. f of 0 is 0, you get 1 minus 0. So 1 over 1 is 1. So we get 2x equals 1. It's really easy. It's just divide by 2, and so you get x equals 1 half. So that's your c. That was a pretty easy example. It was a good example because it was easy. So uh, I have more videos after this that show like you know harder problems and stuff, but the main point of this video was to give you the idea of what is the, the mean value theorem, right? So uh, again, if you have a continuous function on, on a closed interval that's also differentiable on the open interval, there is a number somewhere in the interval where the average rate of change of that function is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. In other words, the slope of the tangent line at that number is equal to the slope of the secant line. In other words, there is a point where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. I hope this video has helped. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. Um, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it.